Hello, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, let me know how you're doing. All of you watching on Instagram, all of you watching on um, Facebook. Let me know how he's doing. Today's a great day. Tell me something about yourself, where you're watching from. So remember that today we're talking about, what we're talking about today, we're talking about dreams. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm gonna pin that up right there. Uh, let's see. Can I do that? Yeah. So today we're talking about dreams. We're talking about dreams, visions, and interpretation. So today we're talking about dreams, visions, and interpretation. So we're going to wait for a couple of minutes and just um, let other people join in. I had a very amazing testimony that I sent in today. There was a guy that was struggling financially. His average income was about 500000 and his income moved from 500000 after the next level prayer to $6.4 million. That is the power of the Holy Spirit at work. That is the power of the Holy Spirit at work. It's amazing. So it's nice. Um, good girl. It's nice to see you. I can see um, uh, Vera Roquad Roquelvera. Ro I don't know how to pronounce your name. You know, I can see various people. So this is what I wanted to do. If you have been having a, go a, com a conversation with someone about how God speaks. So today we want to look at how God leads. I'm looking at dreams, visions, and interpretation. So many people ask the question i dreamt i don't know what the dream means i will answer that today people say what does it mean if i don't dream i will answer that today the question is that where do dreams come from in the first place i will answer that today then i will even now go further to talk about something that is hardly spoken about which is the interpretation of these dreams the interpretation of this dream so this is what i wanted to do if you know people that need to be here all of you on facebook you want to do maybe a facebook party you want to share with your friends all of you on instagram you want to talk to someone let's go ahead and share all of those things at this moment okay i'm going to say what a prayer and we'll leave from there lord jesus please we ask that your holy spirit will make the truth illuminate our hearts in a powerful way in jesus mighty name we pray all right so as we as we teach today we're talking about you know, we're talking about just in a very powerful way. I want to just ask, I hope you can hear me loud and clear and there are no background interferences disturbing anyone here. Just please answer so that I can go ahead. Good evening, Belinda. So I'm expecting some responses. So I hope you can hear me loud and clear and there are no interferences. Yeah. Okay, um, okay, and there are no interferences. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so let's start today by reading a very popular psalm, and I want to just show you, I want to just show you why it is important to hear the voice of God. Psalm 23, Psalm 23 verse 1. I want to pay attention to this. The Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd, one of the, the major thing is saying that the Lord is guiding me because one of the strengths of the sheep is that the sheep depends on the shepherd. He said, when the Lord is guiding me, I will not want. Divine guidance brings about provision. He said, the second thing is this. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. So when you are guided, God will guide you into provision. So one of the reasons why we are led is because we are guided into provision. Then the Bible says, he leads me beside the still water. He says, He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Now, verse 4, I want to listen to this very carefully. Verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Did you notice that? The moment this guy was going to go into the valley of the shadow of death, it was not God that led him there. In verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, it was a matter of He leads me. He guides me. He restores my soul. The moment he began to lead himself, see where he found himself. He says, Do, he says, Do, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's what it is. He says, Do, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So every time God was leading him, there was no problem. The moment he chose the guidance of himself, 
everything went chaotic. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So when you find yourself in the place, it's amazing because this is very powerful. Every time he led him, there was no fear, there was no problem. The moment man said to lead himself, he says that I found myself in the valley of the shadow of death. But this is what he says. He says that even when I make mistakes and I begin to lead myself, it's not a dead sentence because God is a God of many chances. So maybe you blew up your marriage and you had a divorce. You blew up your business. You blew up your relationship. You blew up your business and you have a dead sentence. You have debt. From where you are, there can be what? There can be actually a change. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. He says, thy rod and thy staff comforts me. What does rod and staff mean? Rod speaks of correction. Staff. So rod speaks of correction. Rod speaks of correction. Rod speaks of correction and protection. So when animals are led and they want to be pounced about by other animals, the man will come out with his rod and begin to drive everything out. He said, and thy staff, staff speaks of direction. So the question now is this, this is one of the things I want to say. One of the fundamental things that we have believed in Christianity is this. We've said that number one, God does not talk to sinners. Of course, we know that that's religion. That it has no biblical sense at all. The reason why is that the Bible is full of examples of people that God talked to. Sometimes you will have an unbelieving husband, you have an unbelieving father, unbelieving child, uncle, and the person will say, God spoke to me. And you'll be like, how can they say God speak to them? God does not speak to sinners. That's not true. Let's look through the Bible. Let's look through the Bible. When God showed Pharaoh the dream, was Pharaoh a saint or a sinner? That, it, that there will be famine in Israel. Pharaoh was a sinner. God speaks to sinners. The wise men that were looking for Jesus Christ, were they Christians or not? The wise men were practically magicians. That's what I could categorize them as. You know, God speaks to sinners. You know, um, what do they call it? Um, I mean, God speaks to people in different ways. God speaks, uh, one, God speaks to people in different ways, but God also speaks to sinners. The second thing I want to say is this. I've heard this before, and this is what people say, that, oh my God, if you sin, God will stop talking to you. So you hear people that say things like, you know, I used to hear God before I stopped praying or I stopped doing this and God just, you know, God just stopped talking to me. That is what your mind is saying. Uh, they are, let me give an example. When you sin, your sin does not change God's posture to you. What your sin does is to change your posture towards God. I'll give an example. The biggest sin that was seen in the universe was Adam and Eve. And guess what? right after their sin, the Bible says God came in the cool of the evening and began to call Adam and Eve. God did not cut them off because they sinned. Rather, he was talking to them. The second thing I want to say is this. Look at Cain. The moment Cain killed Abel, what did God do? God did not cut Abel off. God began to talk to him. Someone says, okay, so why is it that when I sin, God stopped talking to me? The reason is simple. Because you have interpreted it that way all your life. Because that's what you have thought about it. That's exactly what happens. Listen to me. This is what I want to say. The way you think will affect your experience. This is the way I said it some other time. I said the manifestation, the revelation of God you have will determine what? It will determine, sorry, excuse me. The revelation of God you have would determine what it would determine the manifestation of god you see so if you know god as a provider you will see him provide for you if you know god as a mighty man of war you will see him win your battle if you know god as your righteousness you will see you walk in the path of righteousness so this is what i want to say to you the reason why most christians um someone says no sound pastor balaji he said my audio is off i'm sorry Is my audio back right now? Okay. Um, is my audio back right now? I had a phone call interruption, so I couldn't pick it. I don't know how to. Can someone help me? I want to see how to do that. You say I'm being muted. Well, I cannot see myself muted. Let me do something else. Okay, can you hear me right now? Okay, you can hear on Facebook, but you can't hear on Instagram, all right? So people on Facebook can hear, 
but Instagram cannot hear. They say there's still no all right. Um, what do we do? I'm going to end the live video um, on Instagram and just bring it back. Facebook will still stay put. You know, you know, we're going to end the live video. Oh, is, is, is the sound back right now? Oh, you can hear now. Good. Okay. So I'm not sure the last thing you heard, but what I said was this. The revelation of God you have will determine the manifestation of God that you see. And this is my challenge. When people always say God is, you know, God is a fighter, is a mighty man of God. They say my God is a consuming fire. I agree. My God is a consuming fire. So you just see dead bodies and burn things all over you. That's what I see. But if I know God as my God is a father, I see the one that cares about me. I see the one that nurtures me. I see the one that takes care of me. Remember, the revelation of God you have determines the manifestations of God you see. If you see your God, this is where I see God as my father. A good father plans for his children. A good father sorts him out. A good father defends his children. That's exactly what I see. And that's exactly what I have. If you need a miracle, one of the things you need to think about when you need a miracle is this. Because God is a good father, he has planned for you. Your children doesn't think of how to pay school fees. A good father plans for his children. You cannot be better than God. So if you want a child, you want to get married, you want a job, the reason why you can rest secured is because you know your father is wonderful. And because your father is wonderful, what will happen? He's going to actually provide for you. He's going to actually provide for you. So I don't want you to ever think that God has stopped talking to me because I sin. The reason why you stop hearing God is this. The revelation you will have is this. Because revelation will always limit your experience. That's what I want to say. Revelation will always limit your experience. So, let me explain it to you. In the scripture, there are bigger truths and lesser truths. The Bible says that the word of God came very strongly. To who? It came very strongly to a man called Loth. He says, don't look back. He says, if you look back, you'll be turned to a pillar of salt. His wife looked back, ah, she comes to turn to a pillar of salt. The same word came to who? Abraham. God told Abraham, look towards Sodom and Gomorrah. He looked towards it. He didn't turn to a pillar of salt. The two of them had different revelation and they walked on different paths. So when I see a lot of people that are very battle conscious, warfare conscious, I don't criticize or blame them. I just understand the revelation that they are working with. But some of us have come into a fullness of a more complete, superior and better revelation. And what's revelation? That number one, that we are seated with Christ far above principalities and powers. That our victory is not something we are fighting for. Our victory is what we have. We understand in the place of prayer, we are not praying for victory. We are praying from victory. We know we are victorious and we are praying from that. Okay, let's go back to this issue. So the question now is this. Um, um, why does God speak? So God speaks to provide, to protect, to preserve us. So now we come to the issues of dreams, visions, and um, interpretation. Please, for the sake of this evening, allow me to really dwell on dreams. Maybe in the next teaching, we will talk about visions. We will talk about visions. Now, what are dreams? Where do dreams come from? I want to turn your Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Someone can put it on the screen in verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 in verse 3. The Bible says this because the Bible tells us itself where dreams come from. It says in verse 3, For a dream comes through the multitude of business. How does a dream come? It says because of the things that goes on in the day, a dream comes to you. So, you know, a dream comes to you. So, what is a dream? A dream is a subconscious activity that occurs in the mental realm when you are asleep. So, for you to dream, you are sleeping. For you to dream, you are not aware. But how do dreams come? There are three kinds of dreams. Number one, there are dreams that are from God, that are highly prophetic. The Bible says that God showed Pharaoh a dream. The dream was strictly from God. The Bible speaks about Joseph, that Joseph, God spoke to Joseph in a dream and warned him of the things to come. But the same way there are spiritual dreams, so question, first question, are all dreams spiritual? The answer is no. The answer is no. Give us some examples of some dreams that are natural. The Bible says that the wife of Pilate, when they were harassing Jesus Christ, began to say, don't touch him. I've dreamt, I've suffered many things in the dream. Number one, that dream cannot come from God. You know why? Because God wanted Jesus Christ to die. 
So it could have not been God showing, it could have not been God showing Pilate's wife that dream because God wanted Jesus Christ to die. It could have not been Satan because Satan thought by killing Jesus, he will have a full day. So it could never be any of those things. So where do dreams come from? Dreams comes from God, dreams come from the devil, and dream comes from ourselves. Prophet um, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3 says, Through the multitude of business, a dream comment. So I'll give an example. When I was young, I was in secondary school. You know, we we're, were meant to write an exam. I think it was my final exam or maybe something like that. And I was dreaming I was in my... One of the first time, thank you, Facebook is back. One of the first things that happened when I watch a um, film about aliens, one of the first films I watch about aliens, you know what I noticed? In my night, when I slept at night, I began to see aliens pursuing me. And as they pursue me, I was saying, in the name of your Christ, I rebuke you. I come against you. I rebuke you. I come against you. I thought that maybe they were demon spirit, but in reality, because I'd watch all those things at night, it began to affect me because my soul had studied up. So there are three kinds of dream. There's dreams that is from God, there's dream that is from Satan, and there's dream that is what? That is from yourself. It's just the way you're thinking. What do, I, what do we know about dreams? Number one, dreams are the lowest form of revelation or guidance. What do we know about dreams? Dreams are the lowest revelations, forms, and guidance. You will notice as soon as the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter 2, dreaming reduced drastically. It reduced drastically. There were not a lot of cases where people dreamt. You know, not like the Old Testament. Because one of the things that will happen is that the message will have to be sipped in their subconscious because their spirit was not regenerated. But in the New Testament, because their spirit is regenerated, the Holy Spirit can lead us right from the inside. The Holy Spirit can lead us right from the inside. It can lead us from the inside. So why do we say dreams are the lowest forms of guidance or revelation? The reason why is this, dreams are subjected to a high influence from natural senses and, you know, and, and natural occurrence. Just imagine, I've seen people that will say, how do you know he's your husband? They say, the way I know my husband is this, I dreamt at night and I saw him give me a rose in the dream. But the truth is this, because your emotions are involved and you have split a lot of scenarios, when you sleep in the night, your mind just picks it up and begins to say something to you. So the reason why we say dreams are the lowest form of revelation is this. Not because dreams himself are bad, but the level of interference with the mind, with the body is extremely high. So what you do is that when you dream, you now need to interpret the dream on the foundation of God's word. That's what it is. So dreams, dreams are wonderful. But remember that dreams are the lowest form of revelation because of what? Because of the influence because of the influence of the mind and the spirit of them. If you know what I'm talking about, you can share me a story, you can tell me if it's true, you can put a response to it. Now, the second question is this. A lot of teaching, excuse me, a lot of teaching says that if you don't dream, there's something wrong with you. Have you heard that before? They say, if you don't dream, you need deliverance. Or if you forget your dream, you need deliverance. When people say these things, this is what I call religions, jabberish or jargons. Someone says, how can you say that? I respect the people that say so, but you can be a minister and not be established in certain truth. Peter was a minister. He was not established in the doctrine of justification, righteousness, sanctification, and the New Testament until Paul came on the scene. So when ministers say this, it's not as if they are false prophets. It's just based on the light that they have. What light do they have? So they say things like, if you don't dream, there's something wrong with you. If you forget your dream, this and this. Number one, there is no scripture that supports that. Okay, someone says, how can I share with my friends? Please, if you want to share your friends, you can tag them. You can share online, offline, that kind of thing. It will be on my, it will be on later, but if you want to share with them, because I want to take questions. In the next eight minutes, I'm going to round up and start taking questions, and also we'll pray for you and make you some important announcement. So then, so if you want to share with your friends, please go ahead and share. You can do a Facebook party, you can tag yourself. So someone says this, and um, you know, someone says this, if I don't dream, it says I need 20 deliverance or something like that. Number one, there's no place in the Bible that says, if you don't dream, there's something wrong with you. Number two, there is no person that 
is perfect in all expression of spiritual gift like Jesus Christ. Amazingly, Jesus never dreamt. Does it mean that Jesus Christ needed deliverance? Does it mean that Jesus Christ needed prayers? Because he never dreamt. Because when people say you never dream and you need deliverance, the question is that if we're like Jesus, then we should not dream at all. We should not dream at all. Because there is no example of Jesus ever dreaming in the whole of the scriptures. This, that teaching is just a lot of people saying a lot of things. So that's the first thing. So people say, okay, so that's the first question. If you don't dream, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing wrong with you. You are as perfect as you can be. You are as perfect as you can be. If you are learning something, I want to post your feedback, type something, tag someone and let them know we're learning something. It's a bit of encouragement to me. The second thing is this. Someone says that when I eat in my dream or I have sex in my dream, what does that mean? The first thing is this. First of all, you even need to know what kind of dream you are having. That's the thing. Because if you, are, if you sleep hungry, the tendency to eat in your dream is high. Someone says if you eat in your dream, you know, it means that in fact there are books People say, this is a book on interpretation of dream. All such books are nonsensical. The reason why is that it's the spirit of God that gives interpretation to dream per case and per time. It is not in a book or a manual. Someone says, if you see snake in your dreams, that means that you have slow, slow delay. The question is that, where do people get this from? Those people get it from sense knowledge and observation. Those teachings are not based on the Bible. Those teachings are not based on the bible so if i dream how do i know the interpretation of a dream it's very simple the holy spirit is not here to confuse us so when we dream we go back to god in prayer and this is what i do lord were you trying to tell me something this is the dream lord in the name of jesus christ please show me help me understand what you're telling me if god begins to speak to me about it i take it serious if he doesn't speak to me about it i know that it's useless I know that it's useless, I move on. The reason why is that, this is what I say, Lord, I dreamed, I don't know the meaning. You're not trying to confuse me, I am not wicked. If you want to tell me something, please find another way to tell me because I did not hear you. The fundamental thing is this, there's a way Christians view God, that God is just trying to punish you. If you miss it, you're done. It's a fundamental problem with your Christianity. If you are a father and you call your son and you say, Shinene, Shinene, if she doesn't hear you, you will keep calling until the person hears you. Because there's a reason why you are calling. There is a reason why you are calling. So we need to do away with this or other thing. So how do you know the meaning of dreams? By praying to God for interpretation. Let me say this to you quickly. Someone says, what about when you go and meet a pastor and interpret? Did you notice? In the Bible. In the Bible. The people that knew God never went to other people for interpretation of dreams. Rather, they were the ones that people came to for the interpretation of dreams so as a christian it is an abnormally for you to go to other people for the interpretation of dream the reason is simple the spirit by which they will interpret is on the inside of you as it is on the inside of them so you should be able to interpret but the thing is this most people don't have faith in their own faith they believe faith in a pastor they have faith in somebody else's prayer if you are going to be a strong Christian, one of the fundamental things that must happen to you is this. You must learn to have faith in your own faith. Faith in your own prayer. Faith in your own confession. Faith in your ability to hear the voice of the Lord. Now, this is what someone says. Okay, so what does the Bible say about dreams? This is what we know the Bible says about dreams. Number one, another thing the Bible says about dreams. So dreams can come from God, from Satan, or from the mind. The Bible says if the dream is spiritual and your dream happens twice, it means one thing, one or two things. Number one, it means this, one, that thing will happen very, very soon. And number two, that means it's a predetermined cancel of God. So when Pharaoh saw the dream twice, Joseph said this thing will happen very, very soon and it's the predetermined cancel of God. That is what dreams mean. And listen to me, see how I'm using scripture to interpret scripture. That's what I'm doing, using scripture to interpret scripture. I'm not saying a story of this person or a story of that person. I'll give an example. When my mother was going to die, and everybody knows, people that are close to me know this, I hardly dream. So if people say, people that dream, I, I don't dream. This year, I can't remember any dream. Maybe last year, I remember two or three dreams. And when I was, you know, as I slept, I dreamt. 
in the dream, I saw that my mother died. So when I woke up, I told my wife and we began to pray. And, you know, I left it. Then another time, I actually dreamt again. I said, ah, I told my wife, I said, there's something going on. I'm thinking, he said, I'm thinking. He said, I'm thinking that my mother died. Ah, that what's going on? Then I told my wife, I said, something is going on. I'm really, really scared. You know that, you know, uh, you know, and the next day, my sister also called and told me she had a dream. You know, when that happened, I just cleared my schedule, went to see my mom. I spent a whole day with her. And that was the last day I saw her alive. The next time I saw her, she was dead. Because God was using the dreams to what it prepare me. So the next question I want to ask is this. Number one, it says, how do I know a dream that is from God? How do I know a dream that is from the devil? How do I know a dream that is from the mind? Firstly, the first way you used to know a dream from God is this. You go into the word of God and says, this dream, like any other guidance, let me tell you how spiritual guidance work. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the Bible says, when prophets are prophesying, okay? So please, um, I, some people are sending people inbox messages and saying that they should send money to me. I have an orphanage. Listen to me. Those things are not my own. You don't even have to bother to ask me. I don't believe in such things, asking people personally for money. Go ahead, report and block their accounts. Please, go ahead and report and block their accounts. So, this is what, um, this is what um, I'm saying to you. Um, people are saying that, so like every other guidance, First Corinthians says this. It says, when prophets are prophesying, it said, let them be two or three prophets, that when others are prophesying, they will judge. Question, how can they, the people that judge prophecy, the reason why is that no matter how spiritual anybody is, they can make a mistake because all of us come under emotional influences. And you see it. In recent times, there was an election, you know, that we all know about. And a lot of global prophets prophesied that this person will win the election. And those things did not happen. Listen, a prophet missing prophecy does not make him a false prophet. He's just human. He's not 100% accurate. And that's what he is. So, you know, so, so the first thing you want to do is that when you dream... Go back to the word of God and ask yourself, does this dream line up with what the Bible says? Does this dream line up with what the Bible says? The second thing is this, to begin to pray and say, Lord, are you telling me something with this dream or this is just a coincidence? The third thing is this, you need to ask yourself, is this dream a function of any physical influence? What was I thinking about before I slept? What was on the state of my mind? What was this? What was that? You need to check the natural circumstances. As you check the natural circumstances, you would understand, you would understand that this dream, for example, you knew you were hungry before you slept. You slept and you felt you saw yourself eating, eating the food. You understand that, okay, that this dream is really attached to the way I felt before I slept. And that's what it is. Now, let's go deeper with this. So I say, what's the difference between a vision and a dream? A vision occurs when you are alive in your senses. There are three types of vision. I will take it some other time. There is a spiritual vision. There is an open vision. And there is a trance. Those are three types of vision. You know, those are three types of vision. You know, there's an open vision. There's a spiritual vision. And there is a trance. You know, that's what it is. So when does a vision happen? In a vision, I can explain that in some other teaching, not today. In a vision, what happens in a vision is this. You are conscious, but you see. Sometimes, if you attend the next level prayer, you will hear me say, I see someone in the spirit. When I say I see, my physical eyes sometimes are closed or they're open. But that seeing, it is a vision because my, I'm seeing by my spiritual senses. My movement is there. I can literally perceive what is going on. Um, we had the next level prayer and a couple were, play with, were, were just saying hi to me. And I said, I looked at the wife. It was a young couple. I said, how is the pregnancy? And she said, oh, no, my wife is not pregnant. That, um, you know, I'm not even ready for that right now. I saw them a week after and he said, Pastor, how did you know I was pregnant? He said, we just went for a test and I was pregnant. And the reason was that as I saw her, I saw into the spirit and I could see there was a baby. I could see there was a baby. I saw into the spirit and I could see there was a baby. We well, were going to have some other classes on the prophetic gift. This is something that will be a private class because we cannot be, you know, um, you know, um, we cannot be teaching some things publicly. It's too deep. It's too deep. We'll have a prophetic class. It will be a very private class and intense. Now, someone says, okay, so what does it mean when I have sex in my sleep? What does it mean when you have sex in your sleep sometimes? It's just the fact that you have a wet dream. That's what it means. Practically, it means nothing sometimes. Someone says, what does it mean when I eat in my dreams? This is, what, this is the funniest one. When you eat in your dreams, let me just give you some things you must know. 
Even when you dream, you want to interpret the dream from the Bible. I'll tell you something. If I eat in my dream, I wake up and I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. Because that means I've entered into a breakthrough. The reason why you think eating in your dream is something negative is this. You have been thought negatively. You have heard so many terrible stories. Firstly, when you eat in your dream, there's no place in the Bible that helps us see that Satan is a giver. That's the first thing I want you to see. So, if Satan cannot feed you physically, he will feed you in your dream never. Now, the only person that says he feeds us is who? Is God. In the Bible, when people were fed in their dreams, it was God that appeared to them. I'll give an example. When Peter had a vision or a dream, the word was simple. It says, arise and eat. It was God that spoke to him. If it was in today's theology, amongst Pentecostals that don't understand doctrine, some kind of deliverance. That's what I'm saying. But when he said that it was God, listen to me, who said to you that I will prepare a table before you in the presence of the enemy? Was it God that said, I will prepare a table before you or Satan? Question, why do people think negatively? Because that is the theology that is available. And someone says, okay, but when I ate in my dream, something bad began to happen. This is the reason why. Because Satan knows that that's how you are thinking. He uses, the dream was natural. But it sees the way you think about it. And by that, you open the door to Satan. That's why the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, it says, give no place to the devil. How do you give a place to the devil? It's by what you say, what you think, and what you believe. That's how you give place to the devil. So you had this dream, and you say, my God, I'm finished. The moment you think that way, and you say that, what happens? And it begins to harass you. That's what Satan does. It gets into the way, begins to terrorize and harass you. So, if I see food in my dream, I say, Father, I thank you. Just like Peter, I say, you prepared a table, just like David, you prepared a table before me. Someone says, I'm confused though. The reason why you're confused is this. It's contrary to the things you've heard. You have to go back to this teaching, listen over and over again, go back to the scriptures that I cannot open right now, and listen over and over again, and you will see the power of God. You will understand the biblical concept I'm sharing. You will understand the biblical concept I'm sharing. Every time people ate, it was God that manifested himself to Elijah. He says, arise and eat. It was God, I mean, every time people ate, it was God that was giving them food. It is poor theology training and African Christianity that makes us think that every time we eat is satanic. And we have to unlearn to learn. We, see, I understand what you're saying. You have to learn to learn. When they say things like you, things like this to you, ask them, excuse me, please. Who in the Bible can you use to substantiate this fact? There will be nobody. Throughout the whole Bible, we are not aware of anybody that Satan gave a meal, either in physical life or in a dream. Either in physical life or in a dream. Now, the second thing is this. Let's even assume that this food was by Satan. So, when he gives you a food in a dream, how does the food in the dream translate to physical reality? If not that you are gullible and you are unbelieving. If you marry a wife in the dream, does it become your wife physically? How come you now think? How come you are thinking? You ate in the dream, now it's physical. But because that is how you have been thinking, you open a door to Satan. Now, there is a direct attack because he can see what you are believing and it begins to attack you. So how do we interpret dreams? The way we interpret dreams is number one. We go back to the Bible and say, who had this type of dream? What does this dream mean to them? We go to the Spirit of God and begin to pray. And let me say something to you. If you're confused, you don't know what it is. This is what you say. Lord, what you're trying to tell me, I do not understand. Holy Spirit, teach me. Because God is not a wicked God. I always say to you, my God is good and my God is kind. God is not a wicked God. And you begin to absorb it. How do you know that a dream is demonic? When the dream begins to attack your very thing, it attacks something, you, you wake up and the Spirit of God begins to bear your weakness in your heart. That this dream is of the devil. It's very simple. You don't have to panic. The reason why is that whatever Satan has in store, the Bible says is the one that frustrated the talking of the liar. I'll tell you something. One time, one of my closest friends, very spiritual friend, he dreamt that he was being buried. This was about 20 years ago. He's strong and fine now and lives in Germany. He said, when he's, and this is about interpretation. When he saw he was being buried in the dream that he died, he woke up. He said, praise God, that was me. But that was my old man that was being buried in Christ. That, that was my old man 
that was being buried. That this new man, he said, he said that's the old man that's been buried. Because it's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. Some people will see that dream and say this and this and this and this was happening. Some people will see that dream. They say, what, what if Dangote is feeding in your dream? That means you are listening to too much of Dangote. Look for someone else to listen to. You know, because people have this bizarre of information. And let me say something to you. The moment you think, the meaning you give to your dream becomes the meaning it is to you. Oh my God. That was a bombshell. The meaning and what you believe about your dream is exactly what it becomes to you. What you believe about your dream is exactly what it becomes to you. And let me say something to you. Most of the time, dream does not work alone. You will hear something that someone dreamt, and when they dreamt, there was now um, another spiritual guardian. The Bible says this, and this is what the Bible says, that when Joseph dreamt, then an angel appeared. There was a further guidance. Um, what do you call it? As Peter dreamt and he said, eat food. And as he was thinking of the food, listen to what Peter did. In Acts chapter 10, I believe, as he was thinking of the food, the Bible says, the voice of the Holy Ghost came and said, arise, follow them. So you will see that it takes the Spirit of God to even guide you and lead you on what you must do. I don't know if you understand me. Let me take some questions and um, we will take it from here. Just very good announcement. This video is very powerful. It will be stored on YouTube, stored on Harvesters NG, and stored here. I want to go ahead and share with your friends. Some of you have heard new concepts. Don't say, I don't understand, and all of those kind of things. Give me some time. Some of you are just getting to know me. Understand, and please listen to it over and over again. Send in your questions, and I will take it. So, also, what about spiritual husbands? Those topics I cannot take right now because it's a whole teaching by itself. All right. Someone says, if you dream about people, is it okay to share the dream with them? The thing is that it depends on what the Spirit of God will have to tell you. Let me tell you something about Christians. A lot of questions we ask pastors, we should be asking the Spirit of God. That's the truth. A lot of questions we ask pastors, we should be asking the Spirit of God. Someone says, I almost drowned in negativity over a dream until I change my perspective. Thank you for sharing that perspective with us. Thank you. That's very, very powerful for sharing that perspective. Someone says, what if your dream is, is about being healed? more than twice but it hasn't manifested in the physical so you will receive it and say father i told you that when you dream does the dream line up with god's word so the dream lines up with god's word and he brings the father i thank you and begin to receive what you have believed hallelujah so i say sometimes i cry in my dream and when i wake up i see tears on my eyes it's very simple if you are hungry in real life you sleep in your dream you are hungry that's the truth you are hungry the same thing about your dream this is about your dream also if you are tired, because these are emotions. Your emotions supersede your body. That's the truth. Your emotions supersede your body. You know, there are some purely demonic dreams. I'll give an example. Where someone will have sex in the dream and physically will see sperm. You will know that's abnormal. It, if the person said, I saw my own, but when a girl begins to see sperm, that's something actually demonic. And that's something on another day. Someone says, I've been seeing, I've been seeing a particular dream for years about my marriage, but I haven't seen anything yet. I've been praying, but nothing is, but nothing. Is it God or something else? Like I said to you, I cannot tell you what is God or not, except I pray about it. So you ask the Holy Spirit what it is. Someone says, what about dreaming and seeing scriptures? All of you on Facebook, I can't get your questions. I want to get your questions on Facebook. Someone says, when you dream of being in handcuffs, what does it mean? So you need to ask yourself, are you watching lots of criminal movies or, you know, because it's about interpreting. It's about interpretation. Someone says, I dreamt that someone gave my late grandfather a post that has jewels and some papers. What does it mean? Listen to me. I don't know what it means. It takes the Holy Spirit. It might just be that that day you were thinking about your grandmother and, you know, and a purse, and that's what it is. Um, someone says, I've had so many dreams. I choose the ones I want to become a reality. I, I'm in charge of my mind and what goes on. Why don't I dream at all or once in a while? I've explained it. You don't dream at all once in a while because you're like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never dreamt at all. So rejoice in that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says, what if you have the gift of dream? Well, I don't know what you mean by the gift of dreams. You know, some people will, the Holy Spirit will speak to them often through that way. You know, that kind of thing. I understand that. What does it mean when you wake up singing? When you wake up, or what, what does it mean when you wake up singing a religious song from your dream? The same thing what it means when you wake up crying from your dream. Something your subconscious has come to natural and that's what it is. Someone says, what is the highest from revelation? That will take another teaching for me to explain. Pastor B, I've had a dream three times. See my fiancée. After she suddenly broke up with me 
and said, I did not offend her. What could that mean? Please ask the Holy Spirit. Someone said, I dreamt of a, I sent a snake beat, beat me. I woke up and I, I felt the exact pain. So you may want to take that dream very seriously because there's no reason why something, number one, it could still be your mind, but there's no reason why something that is in your subconscious should spill over into your conscious. For example, I want to ask you something. Some of you that say that, okay, I, I cried in my sleep and I cried into real life. I laughed in my sleep and I laughed into real life. Question, have you not watched movies where people are kissing in their dreams and people that see them sitting down will see their mouth tweaking and moving and moving. The reason why is that although you are still asleep, your subconscious mind is redirecting your body and your posture. So that's why sometimes you are laughing, you are crying right from the sleep. It's not something necessarily evil or spiritual. Sometimes it could be, but most times it's not. Someone says, my brother had been missing for years and I have a dream that he came back. He came back, but he's not back. You know, all those questions you're asking, you need, you need to ask the Lord. You need to ask the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Chami, for letting them know you need to ask the Holy Spirit. You need to ask the Holy Spirit. Fear also leads to dream. It's, just, it's not just fear. It's the state of your mind. Your state of your mind will lead to what you're dreaming. Someone is asking on Facebook. He says, what about when you see scriptures in your dream? Don't remember them every night for a month. The simple thing is that God is not wicked. If he's trying to talk to you, pray. And say, Lord, show me what you're exactly trying to show me. All right. Um, so someone says I dream, but I don't. I, someone said I dream, but I don't remember. If it's important to you to remember what you dreamt about, it's very simple. Go back and pray. We have instances in the Bible where people forgot dreams, and as they prayed, the Holy Spirit brought back the dream to their remembrance. Someone says that I need interpretation to my dream. The way you interpret to inter, interpret your dream is one by looking for what God is saying. Number two, by yielding to the ministry of the Holy Spirit about the dreams. All right, so we, 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 yes, so we, well, that, that's what we're taking this week. All right, so I'm going to begin to close this. Someone says, I gym too much. Someone says, I gym too much. All right, so we're going to begin to close. I want to spend some time to pray for you. And um, yes, what's your perspective about the vu? It's the simple thing. It's just your subconscious working out. That's what I really believe. You know, I, I believe two things happen. So number one, your subconscious is playing out things. And normally also your spirit has information that your mind does not have. And sometimes your spirit can just show you flashes of what your mind cannot comprehend. Someone says, Pastor, singing from your dream and you wake up singing. What does this mean? Please watch the video. I've answered the question already. All right, let's go ahead and uh, I'm fighting and winning COVID-19. I'll pray for you right now. And as I pray for you right now, you'll be healed in Jesus' name. Please, this week, we're going to have mighty prayers of faith. We're going to have very mighty prayers of faith this coming week we're going to have very mighty prayers of faith for those for finances and businesses it's going to start on monday there will be a supernatural breakthrough i want to challenge you the bible says he that watereth shall also be watered i want to go out of your way and invite all of your friends from next level it's going to be life-changing tomorrow's service we're still teaching i'm teaching about what to do when you need a change desperately hallelujah let's go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke every sickness. We rebuke every infirmity. We command it to go in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. I pray for those in diaspora. The same way that Joseph was established in the land, you will be established in the land you are in. God will bring you into significance and global recognition. You will not be average or you will not be small. I pray for everyone connected to this right now. The power of the Holy Ghost. Shame will not be your portion. Everyone that is stagnated, that is confused, by the power of the Holy Ghost, begin to move forward. I say begin to move forward. The same way that God translated that guy that was making 600,000 to what he was making 6 million, just in the switch of a second, you will have that testimony. The same way that the barren people had children, you will have that testimony. Everyone that is sick right now, be healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. I rebuke infirmity, I rebuke COVID, I rebuke sicknesses in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed from the crown of earth to the of your feet. I pray for everyone that is here, that is inviting people for the next level, that is pushing, that is watering, that is helping people. The same way you're a child of blessing, my God will raise you help beyond your help for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining this live video. I really appreciate that you did. Thank you. Let me get your feedback. Let me get your questions. I love you. Please tag your friends when I post it. Let's share it together. Love you. Have a beautiful day. Tomorrow's service is going to be good. Live service and online service. Either in the Bagada Center or in the Lekki Center. Extremely, extremely powerful. In Ikeja, in Antoni, powerful in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a good night.